welcome, 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 welcome. Oh my goodness, I have it rearranged. Let me kick out, hold up, hold up. Let me kick out our guests one by one. All right, Iggy, TJ, no, no, let me, let me take out. Okay, so how's this go? You should be able to drag us around, I think, but yeah, that'll work. <sighs> what is going on? Just drag the windows around, Mari, my guy. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Boom. Ah, uh, the season has started. There. I've already bottled it. Oh, there you go. Nah, 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 <laughs> not at all. There you go. There you go. Oh man, we we have a wow. We got an additional person. Three against two today. <laughs> oh, whatever. We can take them. Bring them on. Oh, uh, stop! Come on in. Uh, is if it's uh, thanks oh, it's still. Oh, it's still. Oh, if it's still, it's even easier. Keep come on in, still. <laughs> if it's still in the chat, then um, it will uh, bounce it out three, three versus three. But uh, welcome to North London is ours, our second episode. We have a lot to talk about. We didn't even get through all the topics last week because there was so much banter going on, and so uh, of our co host. Mari and we got Mr. Is it TJ right here. We got some new guests for this episode, uh, episode number two. Um, in our bottom right here, we got Tottenham Away's own Iggy. How are you doing? Big up, guys. Lovely to be here, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking all forward right. to it. All right, all right. And then we got a newbie. Oh, man. Welcome to the battle. It's Mr. Connor, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm very happy to be on your channel. And uh, thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the chat today, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I just want to call it out. Connor is my media guy, a.k.a. my right-hand man uh, for TJ Warren TV. So this is Tottenham Away versus TJ Warren TV here. Faction versus faction. Arsenal <laughs> versus Tottenham. It's going to be an incredible show. We're really looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Yes, yes, it's going to be an incredible show. And so um, let's get to the topics. But before we get to the topics, uh, yes, Mr. Mari's tech, <laughs> Suave, as always. <laughs> Big up, True Raz. Uh, we got Harz in the house. We got Frankfurt Gunner, who's also in the house. Uh, we also have Rams, who's in the house. We we'll also have Etna. Ooh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce your name. I'm gonna say Et Etna Et Etina. Aneta. 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 All right, big up, big up. Thank you for the love. We got uh, and she became a butterfly. I like I like that name. And she became a butterfly. We got Alexandre Castro, who's also in the house. We got Mr. Post Office was in the yeah, house. Yeah, Mr. Post Office. And I have to give him props. He was correct. They were getting Declan Rice. They were getting Declan Rice. So I had to give a big up uh, to mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Mr. Post Office. Roy is also in the house. And so our first topic of the night. How many gooners in the, in the chat? Simon the gooners. The gooner, the I'm gooners not used to this stuff. I'm not used they're to right. it. Man, they're 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 big like roach. they're like roaches. The they're coming out. They're coming out everywhere. Big up, big up. Pre season recap. Um, I'll start with ours. Um, our preseason has been a in, in in my books a disaster class, a disaster class in the sense of that everybody's playing three to four games. Our players have played. Most of them have played two 45-minute games. Um, we had a game canceled because of, of, of a, a monsoon. Um, we have 11 days until our next game. We have traveled three countries, right? <laughs> Australia, Singapore, uh, Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. So it's it's been I, – I know the PR – I know we have fans out there. It's, it's just you got to keep it to one country out there. 
and then home base, England, or, you know, like it, it, it's just too much. But like I said, PRFC, that's what we are. And so it's just um, 11 days, 11 days to our next game. Our last game, we played a, a pub team. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to disrespect Lion City. But they actually had the lead at one point, um, but uh, which tells you about our, our defense. Um, but um, it's just for me, there's been a couple good performances, Lo Celso. But do you really trust West Ham's B team and Lion City? Do you really trust that? Um, Madison is looking good. Um, Kane's been in his way. Kane. You can tell he has things on his mind. We'll get to that later on. Um, and then, you know, Richardson, the pigeon, scores a hat trick. But like I said, it's against Lion, it's Lion City. Have I left out anything, um, um, Iggy? St oh, yeah, still no center backs. <laughs> Still no centre backs, man. Uh, yeah, I've just spoken about it today. It looks like the Van Van de Ven deal is is called off, or there seems to be just a drop off of of of, of the deal. Look, the, the the personal terms between the player and the club was done weeks ago. It was done a while ago, but it just seems they they there isn't any sort of agreement between the two clubs. Maybe maybe the club itself have had a change of mind. Perhaps they want to look to keeping him. Same. Same situation for Taps Over. There's no the, the the two the two stories kind of mirror each other. So yeah, we we we're none the wiser as to who's coming in, if anyone indeed is coming in, because it doesn't look like anyone's going out so far. Dyer hasn't got there's no movement with him. There's no move. The only one that is talks about leaving the club is uh, Davison Sanchez, but he's he has reservations about moving to Russia. I I I, I completely get that as well. So. So it just remains to be seen what happens in that front. But you're right; it's 12 days to our uh, what will be our second last um, preseason match against Shakhtar Donetsk, which will give us a different uh, sort of a proposition, more of a game than than, than the last one did. And of course, then we, we 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 go on to play Barcelona. It doesn't leave a lot of time. This is my concern. Um, it doesn't leave a lot of time to um in, in in what I feel is probably one of the most important parts of the team. They're all important they're all important, but that defensive part with the new goalkeeper, um, I think you need to have that gelled uh, as quickly as possible to allow everything else to, to move forward, especially if we are um to play this attacking front foot football where we will be attacking in numbers. You need to have that defensive solidity. And, and we don't have that because we haven't got that situation sorted out. Plus the whole Joe Lewis story and all of that. I mean, that's just like extra extra add-ons. And, uh, and obviously not forgetting the Harry Kane saga. So it's it's with, 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 with three games to go before we play our first, two games to go before we play our, our first league game. It's not the best. It's not panic button. No, no, it's not panic situation, but it's not ideal either. It's not helping the new manager as well, is it? By 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 having the striker situation, defensive situation and so forth. So, yes, champions of the Tiger Cup. I, I saw that. Um, yeah, listen, it is what it is. Uh, we, we, we don't, we, don't uh, we, we move, we move. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Hey, we won. Hey, we won a trophy. We won a trophy. Look, look, look at Harry Kane's re reaction. Look at right? how happy they are. Look at oh, they, they, they've let Richarlison lift the trophy up. I don't think Harry Kane even. I don't think he wanted to be have, having a, a photo with a with a trophy. <laughs> I can that buy trophy. that down at the trophy store down the street from me. Actually, <laughs> one just like that. I saw it. Saw it. Uh, Congratulations to Tottenham Hotspur. You you have something to go. Uh, right next to that Audi Cup you guys won in 2019, was it? 2019. Congratulations. Let the band to be we'll, we'll put it. We'll put it right next. You know, we'll we'll put we'll put our Emirates Cup after we beat um, Monaco. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll uh, put the Emirates Cup next to it. We had to beat Real Madrid, Bayern, Juventus for that Audi Cup. Uh, we'll, we'll sleep on the Audi Cup. You know, 
It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big preseason trophy. I'll put that there with the yeah. Uh, so so while, <laughs> while you guys, you know, and I'm not I'm not going to try to go go on the banter right away, but while you guys were were off beating, you know, a a, a team from what are they from Singapore? Lion well, City. Uh, TJ, the, the the original game was supposed to be against Roma, wasn't it? Uh, we it was. Play, we were supposed to play Roma. Obviously, Roma pulled out of it because of payment disagreement. Let's just put it to that. Yeah. And so <laughs> this oh, this, come on, Iggy, this, don't, team, don't. this team was drafted in last minute. Iggy, don't don't water down my banter with facts here. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to it. Down you know, it wasn't to like we wasn't like you know, we have to pick these guys and say this is who we're gonna play. <laughs> established 2020 yeah yeah tiger cup champions you'll never sing that yes no we will not thank goodness no we will not so while you guys were beating the pub team uh we went ahead and yeah, while, um, we was be- while we was beating the pub team you guys were beating yourselves beating, up in the stands barcelona <laughs> no big deal we were in barcelona. um no no, no, no Mari, where do you want to go first on that one so our preseason games i mean you know, Man United was was awful. That was not a good. That was not a good. Um, on and off the pitch, the Arsenal. On and off the pitch, it was a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> was more, was more fight in in the stands than on the field. Yeah, <laughs> on the I know. Pitch, yeah. Well, here's the th- here's the thing about Arsenal fans, though. Is number one, you got to have. You, it, as with every story, guys, there has to be some some context to it. If I was hot watching my team lose. And in New Jersey, I'd be that pissed off too. So, you know, my Americans in the chat know what I'm talking about. They know what time it is. You're in New Jersey, you're hot. You got, you got Man United fans all around you bantering. I'd, I'd, I'd punch anything right next to me. Doesn't matter what shirt he's wearing. So, so no, it's obviously a disgrace. We don't want to see that out here. But at the same time, it's, 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 absolutely, it's absolutely a joke. People getting in a fight over a preseason game in the stands. Like if it was if it was an actual game, I would I would I would think of something to it. But I mean, at the end of the day, it was a friendly. I'm still pissed off that we lost. But come on, like that's an absolute joke, Connor. What do you think of that whole thing? I mean, it's just embarrassing. Like as if the day wasn't embarrassing enough, we have to deal with with that, right? I was more surprised the fact that there were United fans and Arsenal fans even next to each other. Mm-hmm. You would have thought they'd have been in different sections, but the way it looked, it looked like they actually put them together. Whether they don't, it was just, they don't they care, don't, they don't care over here, which, which is crazy, especially Arsenal Man United. It's one of the biggest rivalries in the Premier League. I know we have a right, obviously the rivalry of Tottenham, but Man United, especially a couple of years ago, about ten years ago, that that was massive. It's been massive for years. Um, so I kind of expected something like that to happen if you're going to mix fans together, but. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit embarrassing the fact that you have got that going on when you're meant to be watching your team because they're at the end of the day it is a friendly and when you do have friendlies you do have the kids that do come along to it because it's not as hostile as you'd like to think if you go to like a normal Premier League game so it wasn't fantastic to see and um, the Arsenal fan couldn't even throw a punch to save his life anyway so uh, <laughs> so <laughs> hey but um, it, listen that that day was just a bad day in general. It was. It wasn't a good day for football, and I'm just glad that I didn't uh, pay to watch it. That's all I've got to say. It was. Yeah, good. you know, and and we'll. Here, here's the thing about us over here on on TJ Warren TV. We'll banner ourselves before we banner before we banner anybody else. We lost twice in one day. Yeah, we yeah. lost twice against yeah. Man United, yeah. and, and and the penalties that were com- were a complete sideshow too. Yeah. So you got Fabio Vieira. Um, you know. <sighs> And here's the thing about Fabio Vieira. He just when you think you're like, man, they might they might get rid of him. He he puts in an absolute worldy against at the end of the game last night against uh, Barcelona. It was unbelievable. What a shot! Obviously, the goalkeeper was dead, but what a shot from Fabio Vieira. I was just like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. This is like I <laughs> I felt bad for cheering Connor. Like after I did that, I'm just like I must be tired because I was like, yo, it's Fabio. It's Fabio oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. What a surprise! It's a great strike though. His, his, his left strike. foot is good when he wants to use it. So fair play to him for getting the goal. And, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Any Arsenal goal obviously is great, but man, ugh, it's just like I just don't rate Fabio Vieira. But anyway, that's 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 that on that. Yes, Mari, we we are are. Our fans beat each other up on the internet, and we beat each other up in the stands over here, I guess. so. No difference to us, then. 
yeah. no different to yeah, ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. online especially so it's uh yeah yeah no different and in, in, in true uh in true mari's fashion uh we can uh uh, uh, confirm that uh, the fans have more fights than the uh, than the uh, own, the own, own players on the field. Let me uh, add this to the stream right here. <laughs> <laughs> that is well, so bad. Yeah. So bad. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Were these were these British that. fans? Yeah. Were they British fans or were they like? American fans that support the clubs. I'm trying to figure it out. What? 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 what, what I'd be what, willing what? to say that they're Americans. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. I, I don't no even care. know why they've mixed the United, and I don't understand that. They shouldn't have done that. That yeah. is the one thing. Well, it was Arsenal do. fan on Arsenal fan, wasn't it? And then it just I, 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 yeah, I just I, I thought it was Arsenal. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but Same. but seriously, you know. Um, you guys bounce back because I know a lot of Arsenal fans were upset of just the players um, not showing that fight. I know um, Martinez had that tough slide of Odegaard. Um, Ty on AFTV was just like disgraceful. Oh, you mean the WWE character Ty? Yeah, I keep going. Yeah, like this is this is football. What 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 are you what are you crying about? Like like are they wearing skirts? No, this is this is this is football. You know, uh, it's <laughs> well, you know, Javi Hernandez was doing the same thing yesterday, complaining that we were going in too hard. There were a lot of fouls uh, last night against Barcelona and Javi. Did you see the comments from Javi today? Oh, they were. We yeah, were I like heard. It was, season it was... game and they were playing it like the Champions League <laughs> final. I'm like, cry more. Cry more. <laughs> That's what we want to be doing. I don't want to yeah. be going against the side because like I said to you multiple times, TJ, that Barcelona team, we could be having them in our group stage. Because yep. they'll be in pot one, and obviously we're in pot two. So that's why I was more happy that we actually put out a fight and scored some goals. Because it's a little bit of a good practice for the Champions League. And um, I wish we could have done it more against Man United because I've been a bit more confident about it. But um, yeah, stuff like that, seeing us win. And the fact we haven't played Barcelona for a good couple of years now. And it was pretty much their main team. I'm not going to hear, oh, it was just a no, pre-season. That it, it was practically their main team they had out there. I'm and um, and to be fair to Arsenal, when normally when we go one 0 down to a big side, we normally crumble and don't bother fighting back. But we fought back, and uh, as soon as uh, Rob Holden came on, it all sort of went to pieces. But hey, it is what it is. But now it was really good. It was a good bit of football last night, and uh, you just got we just got to work on things defensively. Really. Yeah, yeah, and all the people I see people already saying that was Barcelona's B team. Go back and look at that. Yeah, of course, you know you got they they rolled out Dest and they rolled out Marcus Alonso. Okay, those were the only two, but the rest they brought on Kounde. You know they brought on starters. Yeah, the Stegen, I think, I think, Pena, so I'm not hearing that that was the Barca B team. We went out there and we did what we needed to do, and that was not that was not Arsenal starting eleven either. So I don't I think, see- I think you've got two teams that are a different stage of preseason, aren't they? You got you got one team, Arsenal, who are gonna be kicking off the Premier League in less than what two weeks' time mm-hmm. in, in, in a short time. And you got you got Barcelona for what Xavi said that was their first preseason friendly. So the preparations are uh, two yeah. different stages. That's not listen, when you're playing football, that goes out of the window. It doesn't matter what, what stages you are, everyone plays Everyone plays to you know to to you know to the Arsenal look, looking at that's their first game of the season and the Barcelona vice versa. But yeah. I think it's just two two different stages. They 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 made a lot of substitutions in the second half because obviously get, they're trying to give everyone minutes on their legs. Um, you can only look the results. You can only put two to you know it it matters. It does matter and it, and it doesn't. But yeah, at the end of the day, I I, I think. I think Zabi could have spared his, himself those comments. I think that they were really necessary. I yeah. think he, he could have just responded by saying, "Look, we are at this stage of our preparation. Arsenal are clearly ahead. It was a good game, good battle, whatever. Just usual comments, rather than just acting a bit salty on that. But you know, it, it's pride, it's ego, isn't it? It is. It is ego. But here's here's the thing, and I'll and I'll say this again about Mikel Arteta. He didn't come out in the media saying, "Oh, Man United played us really, really hard." It's like, it, no, this is, it, this it, is, it, it, These are the levels. <laughs> these are the levels, guys. And and um, give credit to the Arsenal brass. They know 
what they're coming up against, and they came out on fire. Connor kept commenting on this last night, the high line that Arteta was playing. We oh. went right at Barcelona last night. We paid for it a couple of times. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. This, this Arsenal team remind me a lot of that Spurs team we had with Pochettino. You know, they're, they're, there's so many similarities in, in, in the way that they're playing football, the, the age of the team, quite a young Young team and young young manager who likes to play attacking football. It, it's so many similarities. The difference is that we didn't back Poch when he needed back in uh, post two thousand nineteen, and you guys have done so. Spending, not looking at even at how much you're spending. You want that player, in this case, like for example, Declan Rice, pay the money. No one cares how much you spend. It's not coming out of your pocket. Today they they spent a hundred million on him bring him in and that's the difference between the two but but I will say this that Arteta will be in a different sort of pressure this year because the mm-hmm. club have responded by giving him who they who he wanted they spent the money they've not looked at you know they've not looked to save on any uh you're right you're right what a, a segue. what a segue what a segue I was going to yeah, bring this I, it's, like, it's, it's almost like I knew this subject was coming up, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but, but you know, you, he's been given everything he's, yeah. you know, requested. N- money has not been an issue. They've backed it. They've overspent. Whatever you like, he has had the backing. But now, the fans, the board, they're going to want him to deliver, right? It's all about delivering this season. Um, I'm not saying the Premier League because, look, Man City, uh, you know, there's still some great teams, but he's going to have to deliver something. But there's some, there are some people. There's some there's serious some pressure now on the show. I mean, Lee Gunner says, right, you know, to win the league, right, that is the expectation to win to win the league, right? Mm-hmm. They, some people believe that they've closed the gap with City and that now Arsenal, their expectation is to win the league if they don't win the league, is then to prepare for another coach. I know he wants Ancelotti. Ancelotti's going to Brazil. So you could take that out of the equation. But, you know, is Arteta the hot seat in the sense of, does he have to win the Premier League? Or does he have to just win the domestic trophies? Or, you know, the Premier, uh, the Champions League is a bit harder. But, I mean, I wanted to talk about this last week. Is Arteta on the hot seat this season? Connor, you want to take that one? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, it's now, what, 700 million spent, 650 million? I think even more than that. Um, yeah, it's listen, that first season when he uh, got the FA Cup, it was a great it was a great run out. Uh, we had a great um, end to the run of that FA Cup uh, to get to the FA Cup final, obviously win it against Chelsea. Um, but yeah, it's been back and forth since. You know, there's been many a times where uh, we've noticed, um, I don't know if any of you guys have on the Tottenham side, he does like to throw away the cups now, especially last season. It was a bit of a disgrace when we played uh, Brighton in the League Cup. He threw out the third-choice goalkeeper, all these players that shouldn't really be playing a Premier League side. And, um, yeah, and he's done it with the FA Cup as well. We didn't have a strong side out against Man City. Yeah, we, we only did lose 1-0, but it wasn't a strong enough side uh, last season. So, Otter has to be taking every single competition, even in the Community Shield. He needs to be taking every single competition seriously if he wants to keep his job because he has got to win as much as possible this season now. Um, I, I do think one trophy would keep him in his job. I'd be happy with it. Tro- I want any trophy because it's been – or any silverware. It's been way too long now. Uh, and that doesn't and include a community shield. doesn't include a community shield, no, because that doesn't, that doesn't count as silverware in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, anything from a League Cup to an FA Cup to even a Premier League title. I'm not going to say the Champions League because – I don't think we're going to do that whatsoever. That community um, shield game is going to be a test, right? You guys play City, right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And uh, so, I've said it, I've said it already. Put is both teams going to put all out? Like they're going to put their eight teams kind of the test? I think they will. Yeah, I, I've said already. I don't care about the shield. I just want to beat Man City because, in a way, this is sort of a practice round for the upcoming season because it won't mean any. Well, we won't, we won't get the shield if we if we lose. But I want to I want to see Arteta go out there, put the strongest team possible, and have the team do the best performance that they can. Because it, it like I said, it's it's more it's more of a practice run. And if we can beat them, I'll be more confident going into the season. And if we beat Man City before the season starts, 
I reckon that'll give us a lot of confidence going into the start of the season. I think the players will be more riled up. They'll want to go again. Um, and that's what I want to see. And um, yes, it wasn't that hopeful when we played Man United. Um, and obviously, Man United and Man City are two different kettles of fish. But I do want to see a very strong team, our strongest team against Man City coming up. And um, listen, Arteta has to be, in my opinion, chasing a title this season, and if not winning it. Because last season was fantastic, as we all know with Arsenal fans, at, at, in terms of the running, you know, 248 days up top, wherever it was, 242. Obviously, we didn't complete it. Um, we drew out during the end. Uh, we drew out at the end and we just let go of it. But I now want to see, as we've brought in improvements, us doing it again. And I know Are you, you with this comment here? Are you with this comment here? Yeah, yeah, I, am. yeah, yeah I, I am. am. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no, I am. 100%. He's got to go if he doesn't win anything. It's too much money spent. And I, and I really do hope that the board have made it clear to Mikhail Arteta, if you don't win anything, you are gone. Because I'm sorry, you can't spend this amount of money. I, like, I'd be very shocked if that's the, the, the mindset of our board, that we've given this guy this amount of money. And he hasn't won us anything bar an FA Cup, which really wasn't really his run in. It was Unai Emery's team, if you really do look at it realistically. So work it out with. Is this his fifth season? This is his fifth season, fourth, right? Fourth Coming season, up. Fourth season, I think it is. This is fourth or fifth. I, It'll I'm be his fourth sure. full season. Yeah, it's his fourth full season, yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and one trophy. So if you do, and, but, and, but I, I always said at the beginning, right, he's, this is his first proper job. Probably as a first team manager, obviously he was an assistant at Man City. I'm going to let him go out. He did win the FA Cup, which gave me a bit more confidence in him. I thought, okay, you know, he beat City, he beat he beat Chelsea uh, to get to that final and win it. Um, but then, as we all know, it dropped off. We kept getting knocked out easily of the Europa League. In my opinion, we should have been winning that competition every season we went into it. You know, there were some aspects where we thought, how are we not winning this? You know, Olympiacos. Um, last season with Villarreal. Um, there was many a times where I thought, we need to win this. We've got such a good run where we can get to the final and win this, but we haven't. Um, so there's been many ups and downs with Mikel Arteta. Um, I think last season sort of gave Arsenal fans a reason to say, right, one more season. Okay, one more season. Because if he can do that, but he didn't win anything, which was a major letdown, he's got to do it again, in my opinion, this season. He has to. You've got to be fighting for it. If you're doing that last season with a worst with a worse team, I think we've got better improvements in the side now. We have got to do it again and win it. I look I look at it with Liverpool. You know that season when they were that close and they didn't get it against Man City, and then next season they smashed it, went out of the park and got the lead. And um, so that's what I want to see. That's the mindset I want to see this season. I don't want no. Oh, we want to get top four. That's the main end. No, I want to see the mindset of we want to go for that Premier League title this season. But I will, I will. I do want a cup, something like that. I want some silverware to, to answer the question. Of, like, the only that way one. that I would accept him staying is again finish is finishing top three in a trophy. If he doesn't get a trophy, I don't care where he finishes. Yeah, um, I want him gone. Yeah. Um. I and I think the expectation of the board is the same. The expectation of a of fifty percent of our of our fans is we want the Premier League or he needs to go. Period. And, wow. and we all know, we all know that we aren't going to, I don't think we're going to go much farther than the round of 16 in the Champions League. If I'm going to be 100% honest with it, we're not, our, our track record in Europe is not great. And while we have gained depth over the off season, have we gotten enough depth and have we gotten enough quality in that depth remains to be seen. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we continued to throw away domestic trophies. I wouldn't be at all surprised because... Is your squad big enough to compete, though, TJ, for both Premier League and domestic trophies? If we're excluding the Champions League Yeah, I I mean, if we're excluding the Champions League, yes, but we can't exclude the Champions League, Iggy. That's the problem because our starting 11 is going to need to start in both the Premier League and the Champions League, which is why I... There could be a couple of rotations, like, TJ. Yeah, I mean... You have the squad, it's what I'm saying. You have the squad. Yeah, right, but we, right. But we still, but, but we're still bringing in those. You know, there will be people that are starting in some games and then coming off the bench in others. But you, those people cannot play. You cannot play three games a week that way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we're gonna yeah. need people like ESR to step up. We're gonna need people like, I hate to say it because he's not going anywhere. Eddie and Kedia to to step up. Rob Holding to step up. 
Smith Rowe. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, it, them last year. Smith Rowe. I want coming off the bench. He looked. He didn't look half bad yesterday either. Well, well, well um, look at this, right? A big up um, United for life. He's 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 on on fire tonight. Where do you rank Arteta now? Currently, right? right? I'm not looking at resumes, but in, in, in tactics in regards to like because the Premier League, like I said last week. It's going to be tough. Aston Villa played here in Orlando, met with some Villa supporters. Emery, Poch, Pep, Klopp. Like, where does he rank within that that group? Do you do you rate him higher than those coaches? Because, ma- I mean, managing is, is a huge factor to win the Premier League, you know, to finish top four, to win those domestic trophies. Where, where do you rank Arteta? I mean, I would... I would rate him right next to to Potch, right? Because he's he's finished he's finished just as well as Potch. I mean, finishing finishing at the end of the day is what it's all about, right? Where do you finish? So he got sec- Potch got second. I I, I don't want to comment on whether or not he's better than Emery because it's different levels, right? And I don't think Emery really got a fair shake with Arsenal. If we're being honest, I don't think Emery got a fair shake. And- I. I- and and so so it's it's hard to say what Emery did with Aston Villa, they're they're dangerous every time you play him now because he's in charge and he's bringing in players that are good enough to 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 do the job. You know, if you're going up against Aston Villa, they have a chance to win every game, every game. So it, it's one of those things where he's he's in the Poch Emery area, but he's not he's not close to those people who have so many trophies up there, Pep. Freaking Klopp, you know. I, I don't think he's anywhere near those guys, especially tactically. He really, I need to see some improvement from Arteta, and I think I'm going to echo a lot of Arsenal fans here when I say that he really needs to work on his substitution and his overall tactics and game management. I need to see something better. I I don't want to see any more of this. Okay, well, you know, this isn't working for us, so let's bring on party. Well, let's bring on party in the 80th minute when it's too late to do anything. And we're in the games already out of our hands. We need to start seeing some subs earlier. He did sometimes he did that um, at points last season, but in the game against Southampton, for instance, Mm -hmm. we didn't see subs until the 75th, 80th minute. And I'm sitting at the bar fuming, yelling at him because he's not, he's not making those subs. So that needs to happen. If we're talking about Arteta, like Arteta is not out of my doghouse by any means. Everybody's saying, oh, TJ, you're Arteta in. You're not call- actively calling for him to be out, blah, blah, blah. No, no. I need to see – he is on a short lease with me because if he doesn't fix these issues that I just brought up, we're going to continue to see the same issues and the same errors and the same bottle jobs that we saw last season. It doesn't matter who's in the lineup if he can't manage it correctly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, think, I, I think the pressure is going to be – so much more this year. Um, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I thought you missed the best chance of winning the Premier League last season because really and truly Man City were, ha- were having a bit of a blip to begin with. Of course, they came strong towards the end of the season. But you've got to think of all the teams that had issues. Chelsea, uh, they would normally be in there. Um, Man United really started off badly. And then if you look at um, Liverpool themselves, weren't really quite at the races. Now we got Liverpool are going to be coming back. We know they're whether they're good enough to win the Premier League remains to be seen. Chelsea, new manager, new lease of life. They, you expect to bounce back from these guys. Newcastle are when making waves. Man City are still for me the team to beat in the Premier League. Um, so you've got more. There's more competition for mm-hmm. that ultimate prize. And with the added pressure, the, the things that you've just mentioned about. His in-game management, particularly with the games, um, when the games are sort of locked, you know, when you when you need to, when the, the 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 touch, the hand of the manager makes the difference in certain key moments, which failed you in key moments last season, particularly the latter part of the season. When you get all, and obviously the the pressure of all the players that have got to come in, paid big money, Kai Havertz, and then and and. Uh, Declan Rice, the name too. Mm-hmm. All this added pressure now. People want to see results. And now, I think this is the big, big season for him. And the pressure is going to be immense. How he handles that is going to be all the difference. Um, for me, though, guys, I know you guys brought in Tim uh, T- Timber, which partner, um, 
which will probably be a better partnership for um, Saliba than, say, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, f I still think that number nine, that number yeah. nine, you need that number nine that will get you 25, 20, 25 goals a season. I don't think you've rectified that. And I still, to this day, and I've spoken to many Gooners um, along with the travels at work or even just every day. I live in North London, so there's Gooners and Spurs fans every time. And they've all said that quite a few of them haven't understood the 65 million spent on Harvards when that money probably should have been better used for for a number nine. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Yeah, so so Mr. Post Office, I don't think uh, Iggy wasn't saying that Timber is going to replace Gabrielle. So I don't. Yeah. That isn't what he was saying. He was saying he was going to go no, next. No. Week. I I think I think that um, oh, I, I I honestly think that he is on the hot seat, guys. He's on the hot seat. He has to be because how the Cronkies work, by the way, because I've been following Cronky, you know, for those of you who don't know, who don't meet, know me or follow my channel, TJ Warren TV, subscribe right now, by the way, shameless plug. By the way, yeah, let's use um, this opportunity to head over to his channel. Absolutely smash and subscribe there. And, and, you know, smash the subscribe here, like, do all of that, guys. Do, do all, all that. that. Do all that right maybe now. Put the link, maybe put the link in the chat to make it easy for everybody. But yeah, there we go. Absolutely we go. do that, guys. TJ, please subscribe to Tottenham Away if you're not subscribed. And also subscribe to Soccer Sessions. Um, please hit the like. You guys don't know how much we like when you hit the like, it's free. Hit the like. For me, I, my, Mario, this is how I take a lot. A like is almost like a pat on the back. As if people are enjoying the stream, they're enjoying the content. The, the only way we can we, we can take that pat on the back you, is just by smashing the like. That's right. it. And it's free of charge, by the way. Subscribing and, and liking doesn't cost absolutely exactly. anything. Well, no, it, one click oh. away. Zaffa, yeah, sorry, 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 TJ. Zaffa, can you tell me how Arteta's transformed this club? Because yeah, I was going to address that too. So I don't know what you want about, mate. But I don't the way, I, the can, can I just? I wanted to add something because he mentioned something about Gabriel. And I, listen, I saw Gabriel with play with uh, Saliba, and I saw Gabriel play without Saliba. <laughs> Two different Gabriels, massively. Yeah. All right, yeah. I did oh, watch yeah. enough games of Arsenal to, to differentiate how different he plays depending who's alongside him. I even think Tim has been brought into to provide competition. He can put on his clown nose. Like, yeah, he, it's he, some, he, 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 there is a mistake in Gabriel. I I rate Gabriel. Don't Gabriel get me wrong. Gabriel solid, but yeah, he does have like well, Man United the other day. He had a gaff in the preseason game. I could have sworn Man United. Was Mario, last like, night, he, we were playing such a high line. He actually was at one point in the midfield or at forward, and then Saliba. <laughs> there's this massive gap between him, and he's like, "What's going on here?" And uh, Barcelona ran right through and scored a goal. Um, so he's got, he's got. I like, I love Gabriel. I'm such. A I, watch, I mean, I watch, I watch Arsenal. I would take get uh, Gabriel at, at Spurs. I, I would take him, but I'm not gonna say he's like. There's no. Yes. So here's here's the thing. I, I, Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. I just have to we, can't, we can't even compare defenses. I'm I, not yeah, even going go to go there. I'm not comparing our defense. I mean, I'm not defense. I mean I uh, all the Arsenal fans I out there. Real, Gabriel, real but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna rate him at an equal level as Saliba. I mean, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, Saliba's head and shoulders. We are not calling him Pal Paolo Maldini. Is it, that doesn't mean we don't rate him, okay? That's the thing is you can criticize these players without thinking that they're terrible. There is there is a middle ground there. Let's relax. Okay, that's funny. That's really funny, Scott. Three gooners. Big, up, Big up, Scott. Him. Wow. Um, that's no. missed. Why, why do you do an Iggy like that? Why are you do an Iggy like that? They, they, you know what it is? They want me to slam, to slam. We the thing is, guys, it's preseason still. We're looking at our teams. We're discussing. It's not the competition. The league hasn't started. The games, the North London Derby is not. When we will have this conversation when those games are getting nearby. You right. get you get a different animal in all of us when that happens. Exactly, and and it's okay. And it's okay, by the way, to say that Arteta's on the hot seat. What I was going to say before I shamelessly plug my channel, TJ Warren TV, um, <laughs> subscribe right now. Um, what I was going to say, and then we can move on, um, is, is look, 
the Kronky, I've been following Kronky franchises for a long time, 20 years, 25 years now. Um, when they, they, they have filled in the gaps and I can tell you, they have spent the money to fill in the gaps and now they feel that it's time to win. You can see that in the intent of their, of the fact that they just dropped 110 million on Declan Rice. They are serious. Now they think Declan Rice and Yuri and Timber and for some reason Kai Havertz is, are going to plug the holes that we need to get us over the line. And if they don't see us get him over the line, they're going to look right at Mikel. And you cannot tell yeah. me differently because they did that with the Avalanche. They did that with the Nuggets. They did that with every other franchise they've done over here. L.A. Rams, go and look it up. Because and, and if there's one thing that the Cronkies are good at, it's winning trophies over here. They haven't done it over there. So if they think Right now, the target is right on Arteta's back. And if you don't see that, I'm sorry you're delusional. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. It's business. You football can't. is a football is a results-based business. And now, like, I'm sorry. Mikel is out of excuses. This is his team now. He needs to win. Thank you, Tot Spurs. He needs to win. And with that, Mari, I will shut up, at least for now. So, since we mentioned center backs, um, and I'm, I'm going to go a little rant. Um, it's going to be a calm rant. Um, um, I, it's, you know, I live in Florida where there is, you know, hurricanes that come through. And, um, and sometimes you need funding to fix your roof, right? Because sometimes a hurricane can damage your roof. And so... Uh, for the first couple of months, you put, you know, you put a tarp, you know, you could put a patch up, but eventually, you know, you're going to need your roof to be done and done by professional roofers. So you might get away with it for a couple of months. You might get lucky the next year because maybe the hurricane season, the storm season gets less. But if you go into the second or third season, right, the third year of not fixing that roof, you're asking for trouble when that hurricane comes. And with Spurs, it's been three years, three years that we have needed, maybe four, needing not one, not two, but three center backs. And the thing is, the thing is, people say we can't, and it's true, we can't sign the tier one center backs, right? The Guardians, the, the, uh, uh, what's the guy for uh, Inter? Bastoni. Uh, Bastoni, because of the price, also the prestige. You gotta leave those places for Spurs, really? No. We're not signing the tier twos, that is the VDV, Vendeven, and Tapsoba, right? Because 40 mil, 50 mil, that's out of our price range. We're not signing Phillips, which is tier three, and now I'm considering Tosin. Where the hell are we going to get these center backs? And long lay, mate. Long lay's coming. And as of today, it's long only lay long lay coming in. And the thing is, we have some in our fan base who are like, Mari, your rant is being negative. Langley is not good enough on that high line. He's going to get killed. I, I've watched our center backs. I've watched Eric Dyke get smoked by Rashford. Get his pants pulled down. I've seen. Mari, Mari, I was at the Brentford, the last game of the season, the, the last home game of the season. I was there. We had Davis at left back, which is where Ange Postacoglu is looking to play him this season. And we had Longley next to him. And there was Uwebu on the right-hand side. Absolutely ripped him a new one. Absolutely destroyed us in the second half. It took him 10 minutes to kill the game off. We, we was leading that game and we lost it. And we've lost it because we don't have... Uh, defenders, first of all, that are on that the level required for what we need, and secondly, they're not they're not quick enough. They're too slow for the game that we want to play this season, which requires us to play a high line. 
they don't have what's 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 needed. And the fact that we linked to Longley, if if I truly believe Longley was the best option and the best defender out there that we can go and get, I'll say sign him. But the long lay thing is only happening because he's the cheapest option. He is the cheapest option. We, we can't we get you like you said, 80, 90 million signings. We can't we're struggling to make 30, 40, 50 million signings. And we badly require that. And we can't, and the thing is, we have no leadership in that back line. Here, our offense looks great, right? We may get away and pump some teams, but when we play the good teams, we are going to bend over and get pumped. Like, seriously. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's, it's mind-boggling. It's, it's, it, it's incompetent. Like, it is a disgrace that this team, right, before preseason, right, and I love the spirit of Ange, right? I, 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 like, we're already telling you, we're, we're already telling him we're going to fail you by not signing a, a, a center back for this preseason tour. Th this is this is asinine. This is crazy. Like literally, it is crazy. And I'm just like, you look at Brighton, they're signing players. Villa getting Paul Torres. You got Brentford signing people. And now we get to Tosin. Right, we we get we we get we get to Tosin. Looks like he said it's Monaco. Well. Let's go to Monaco. Right, that was the cheap cheap option. Right, the fourth rated center back on their team on Fulham is going to Monaco. And can you blame him? Monaco has a history of producer plays. Right, Mbappe. Right, uh, John uh, Martino. Like Monaco. Terry right, Henry. Okay, Terry Henry. Henry. They have a history of, mm -hmm. uh, of it. So Tosin's like, you know what? Monaco looks more attractive, attractive than Spurs. You know, do you know, Mari, what the irony is that we are probably we are probably three, three players away, like maybe two centre backs and and maybe a holding midfielder. We're probably three players away from our team completely changing because don't forget we've got one game a week in in the league. And the cup game, domestic cup games, going to come into play. But until then, it's literally what you don't need a huge squad. You just need to get three really good players that will make all the difference in this side. And that could be the difference at the end of the season, finishing seventh or eighth from the sort of position where we ended this year. Or in the, I'm not saying Champions League. I'm not going to say that. There's too many teams playing it, so I, it's, I can't say yes, hundred percent. But at least you'll be in that bracket between fourth and six and then you like depending how results go it, it, it will determine where you end up but that's the difference between getting those three players in that we desperately require two center backs holding mid and not that's the difference so we don't mean six seven eight players obviously i'm not including the harry kane situation right here because if that that happens then of course you need to address the striker situation but that's what we're looking at three players away from from completely changing no, changing it and giving Ange a really good team to work on this year. Because for me, personally, this year for me is like a, a transitional year. So I'm not putting any ex differences to what the Arsenal fans are doing, but they have the right to, to be thinking that. They're putting the pressure on a manager to deliver this year with the team that they has. I'm not doing that with this team because we are, for me, we, we're in that transition year. So why not get these guys in put some foundations in place and then next year we can start start you know that start that process but we 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 we're not we're not we're not in anywhere near doing that right now and i i don't see what different outcome there's going to be this season coming up compared to last year when there's not been any differences other than the manager so how we how we're doing the manager and it's a, a good service by not giving him the tools that he requires that failed the last manager. Because he's working with exactly the same players, guys. He's working with the same players. Yeah. Plus all the players that come back from loans that weren't good, deemed good enough in the first place. So it, there's when you think about it logically, sit back and think about it logically, none of it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at personally, uh, Mario. I don't know about you, man, but that's where I'm at with it. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I have so much more to say, but I want to get to the Super Chat. Big Which up. is music, music to Arsenal's ears, by the way. I know that. I know yeah. what I'm saying. Is that they're, 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 they're refraining from laughing, but I, I sense yeah. their joy. Yeah. But big up, well, let me read the super chat. Big up to yeah, Tiller. Cool. 
Double seven. Great photo, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's one of my favorite photos. Um, I'm actually going to blow it up and put it on my screen. Um, two favorite players, Maradona being one of them, um, and Hado. Um, rather than these two gunners on the pad on the board, that Levy, forget Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham as our rival. Daniel Levy is our main rival. And so this is where I go to say, I, I honestly, and I know we're going to get to the hot topic, which is Joe Lewis, but I want to focus on this. Um, it, it's, 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 it is so discouraging to really know what's the ending of the story is going to be that Levy is only going to back this manager to a point and it's not going to be enough. And it's not going to be enough because for Levy and the board enough is top four Champions League money. And that is it. That is, that is their, 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 their mountaintop um, regards to success because I, I, I can't see how. And people say that Dan Levy is a smart man, that he doesn't know that we lead 63 goals last season. The number one priority was not Madison. Yes, I love the signing of Madison, but he was not our number one priority. Our number one priority was defensive reinforcements. And to now go on and not have not one, not one, with life about Langley, he's still not in, within the group. Like it is pure, pure incompetence of the of the board, Levy, the scouting networks. All right. I mean, I'm going off in a rant because I'm seeing your 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 second favorite squad, AC Milan signing. Young Argentina uh, talent, right? Guys like Julian Alvarez, you know, but, but same avenue. Even MLS clubs are signing kids from South America. And right now, I have a team that only looks for cheap bargains, Solomon, on a free. Oh, Madison, his contract went, running out. Oh, he has one year left. Basuma, like, like, we don't scout young players. We don't get mid-tier, tier two players. We're definitely out the league in regards to tier one. It, it, it's frustrating and it's it's a crime. And anybody that's leaving in, you you have to you have to be on something. Give me that positive um, medicine that you're taking, whatever you're taking, because Tosin just rejected us, and I don't even rate him that well. I don't even want him, and he rejected us. <laughs> Arsenal, you have the floor. What do you think of our bleep show? I don't want to get demonetized of a center back situation or defensive situation. Because trust me, our win backs, they're not all that hot either. Well, we have a center back that we will give you guys for free. His name is Rob Holding. Oh, okay. You can, you can take him. Um, he is at least on I'll Eric Dyer's level. He, he's at least on Eric Dyer's level. Um, and Sanchez's we level. We don't need any more. Mistake he made last night against Barcelona. Literally was on the pitch. This is what scouting's about. Frankfurt Gunner, you, you, you're, you, thank you. One of my favorite posts of, of the day. Quality signing. Quality signing. You can't right? get them, Mari. Oh. They're all out there. But yeah, if you're not going to invest there. big, we got yeah. win back up. I, 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 like, I mean, they're 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 out there. But there's two types point? of there's two types of transfer market, guys. You either go out there and spend the money, say that's the man I want, and I'm willing to spend whatever the case just to bring him in because he is the one that I want, which is what Arsenal did with Declan Rice to give an example. And then there's a different type of market where you you spend on recruitment, you spend on a recruitment team. To go and find you gems in different leagues and say, like this guy here, 10 million euros. That's peanuts in today's football. Peanuts. Oh, yeah. But, but what, you know, that's, you need to decide what you want to do early. We, like I said, we're not, we don't have a clear strategy as to what we wish to do. No There's no strategy as to, we're not doing one or the other. We're just kind of, all, it, the, the feeling for me, the feeling is that we're making it up as we're going along. There's no clear strategy to what we're doing. That this is this is the way. We don't go buy big. We buy on 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 gems that just need to be um, bring them out to fruition. Essentially, 
you know, a little bit of work, but they are, you know, bring these gems out. Youngsters, hungry. Um, although you always have to have a little bit of experience in there to, to guide that, that 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 squad. But we we don't do that, and we don't do uh, we we don't we don't do the, the other either. So I, I, I fail to get on board with any kind of project because where there isn't one, and that's my frustration. People have said to me on Twitter, you know. Like you know, you calm down for for a grown man. You don't. I, I go into meltdown. Apparently, they, they call this a, a meltdown. I'm not having a meltdown. This is not me having a meltdown. This is me addressing what I feel the problems of my team are. I express my my feelings towards it. I see what's going to happen if it doesn't get addressed. But you know, apparently, you know, the market is open till the 31st of August, and we should be patient. We are just keeping these guys warm. Van de Ven, Top Sober, we're keeping them warm. We have to now concentrate on on letting players go, recoup some funds from those players that we let go, to then go invest in the market. So stop having a meltdown, Mari, because there's still time. This is what I'm getting told. So maybe I should so, pass on the same. So when are you allowed to, you. to have a meltdown, Iggy? That's that's what I'm going to say. How about me? Uh, we we. Well, when when's the Premier September League? September first. When it's too late. <laughs> when's the Premier League kicking off? In, in two August. weeks time, three weeks. August, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if I, we are now what 27, 28th of, of July. I mean, there's you know, it's, it's plenty of time to get these guys. The, the people think that it's like a a, a a computer game where you just buy the players in, put them in a team, and off you go. These ty- these oh, these players need if you're getting them from abroad as well. They need time to settle in, blend, you know, breathe in with the team, getting to know one each other. Even if they, they may not even be speaking the language, that so they need to like this. This this things requires time. It's not just a case of playing football as soon as you arrive. It's about getting to know people. Some people are are, are comfortable, you know, expressive, and some people are in their shell. Takes time. Slow burners. There's all of that going on. That requires time, understanding, working on the on, on, on training, uh, on the practice field, make sure that everything's fine, and then bring it out onto the to, to the football matches in front of them. Because you know what it's like. As soon as you step on the pitch, the fans don't care where you've come from, how long you've been there. Mm-hmm. It's about results and, and delivering. And if you're not delivering for whatever reason, they get on your back. And, and and Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is not the easiest place to, to to play right now if 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 you're not delivering. That's all I'm saying, man. And that's for me. That's why I find the whole thing insane. And when people say to me, "Stop having a meltdown," I'm like, "No, this is not a meltdown. This is me. I can't fact. express the importance of getting these players in straight away." Uh, can I quickly point out something here, Mari? We've got this guy called Bobby in the chat. Um, I just want to quickly read out his message. This, this, it's actually these. Uh, these two Arsenal fans who don't want Arteta. First, we never said we don't want Arteta. Bobby, if you maybe listen to our things properly, the statement that me and TJ are both making is we want silverware from Arteta. We don't want, we're not saying, oh, that's it, we hate him, get him out. We're just disappointed in the fact that we haven't seen silverware. And um, he saved our club from oblivion. Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. God we're, we're sitting in oblivion. I mean, I don't know what he's done to save us from oblivion apart from spend 600 million and get us one trophy. But hey ho, it is what it is. But listen, yeah, and if it wasn't for Arteta, Declan Rice wouldn't have considered us. Yeah, fair play. I get that. I think Arteta was one of the main reasons. I can agree with that why Declan Rice did come in. Um, I think we all know that him and Edu did actually play a massive role in bringing him in. But I want to quickly say this we haven't said it out and out and loud and clear that. We don't want Arteta. We just said we want silverware. I think any Arsenal fan wants silverware. You can't not accept silverware. And we've been here long enough to know that Arsenal Football Club should be fighting for Premier League titles every single season. They should be up at the top. And I, I'm going to quickly go back to the point earlier where we were sort of comparing him to Poch um, and saying, oh, what level is he on? Poch got Tottenham into the Champions League every season. Arteta's just got us into the Champions League, and this is his fourth season. Um, and listen, I'm not I'm not here to chat crap about Arteta because I was actually very happy with the football we played last season. Unfortunately, it didn't end well, and um, I was one of the ones that said, "Jesus, are we actually going to do this? We're going to win this title." Um, so I'm not going to I'm not sitting here and um, slandering Arteta or anything like that. I'm just picking out a comment where he said something, and it's not true. You've got to listen to what we're saying. Yeah. And um, but I think. 
in my heart, I know that I want Arteta to win his trophies. I think if you've got any manager, you can be supporting a League Two club. If you've got a manager in your team and he's not either winning you silverware or just sort of dragging you down, then what, what's the point in having him there? You know, you want managers. Same with Tottenham. And the Ange Postacoglu has just come in. Tottenham want trophies. I know we can all laugh our Tottenham trophies, but Tottenham fans want trophies. And if Ange doesn't produce that, then they won't want him there. You know, it's as simple as that. And, um, and that's exactly what we're uh, and what we're doing. Arteta is the one that has brought us back. Bobby, how has he brought us back to the good times? We haven't won a title. We, we've only good won times. A when, when you think about the good times, Bobby, what are the good times? What? When the good oh, times, I'm thinking, um, it, I'm thinking early aughts, invincible, winning, like literally all this kind of stuff. We haven't yeah. done that. I hate Those were the good times. We're back at the good times. What have we done? We've had one season where we were top for 240 days, and then we lost it. So I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit. Uh, getting a bit angry here, but I don't understand how he's brought us back to the good times and all this stuff. I just don't understand it. You're free to rant. You are free to rant. Um, so, um, provide the examples, Bobby. Uh, maybe that's what I think. The, the, what the guys are saying is give it, give them the examples because obviously you're contrasting what they're saying. Give examples as to what he's done to bring back the good times that perhaps weren't there previously before he joined. If you can give some examples, maybe they can. Cancel I don't think Bobby's. I don't think Bobby was around for the Invincibles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, Dave, we're still in the process. I'm trying. To, I'm we trying to help Bobby. Here. I'm not, yeah, we're not. Bobby it's here. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's move on. Let's move yeah, on. on. We'll leave that because yeah. we're not get what are you? What do you guys view? And yes, you guys are Arsenal fans, but I spoke to Villa fans yesterday, and they found it shocking that. Well, and, and they know their stuff. They're gonna be appearing on soccer uh, um, soccer sessions channel. Um, please like and subscribe, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe and like Tom number way. Um, um, TJ's channel, which I had started, where uh, was TJ's channel? Um, I, I'll in the chat. Yeah, the it's also in the chat, but I will bring it back up again. And also um, soccer sessions. Um, they found it shocking, shocking that Tottenham have not signed a centre back or have done anything to improve their defence. Mm -hmm. what, what what is your view in regards of a, a club like ours in the situation that we're in, yeah. and we have not backed our manager in regards to centre backs? And this goes over back to Jose because remember, yeah. we went a skin yard and we gave him a rodent. I think it's kind of crazy that. Um, you know, even when you look at Jose, I mean, it's kind of crazy that Daniel Levy's bringing in these caliber of managers into Spurs because Conte and Jose Mourinho are two big managers, like big name managers. And um, I, don't, I can't lie, I know we don't get on with Spurs, but I wouldn't mind seeing Ange Postacoglu come in and actually make a name for himself. I wouldn't mind seeing that, to be fair. But you've brought in these two big managers and you haven't supported them. Why have you brought them in and not supported them? You know, that, that's what I don't understand. You know, there was multiple times when you had obviously Conte and you were bringing in players that he didn't even want. You know, like he, he didn't ask for them and he wasn't even playing them, i.e. Dan Juma. You know, what, what was the point of having him in? And uh, Conte didn't even want to play it. Jed, Jed Spence. Yeah, Jed Spence. He didn't want him. Jed Spence wanted game time. He might as well have said Nottingham Forest. So I do think it's actually, I, I sort of feel your pain a bit, guys, because I, I, I'd hate this feeling of nothing's really getting been getting done at Tottenham. There's no yeah, cohesion, man. There's no cohesion. 100%. There's no cohesion. I mean, the reason why Conte was brought in was... Um, we, we, know, we know this, guys. The, the reason why Conte was brought in because Daniel Levy came under pressure in front of the home fans with a, that 3-0 loss against Man United where they turned on him and said, you know, we won't leave you out of this club. And he, as a reaction, really, he knew he had to do something to get the fans back on board. Got Conte in. And all of a sudden, he was away from the, from the, from the, from the, from the fingers getting pointed at him. But what he failed to do is he gave the guy, you know, twenty million a year to 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 do absolutely nothing because he didn't back him in any way. And when he achieved top four, and then what did we do the following season? We didn't do absolutely anything in, in to, to 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 back him that summer to go again. Instead, we made top four to then completely come crumbling back down. But in the meantime. All of that's happened is mm. he got himself out of the, the firing line. What he's done now, 
he listened to what the fans apparently wanted. He wanted the attractive football. We want somebody, you know, we're fed up with his Jose ball. We're fed up with his Conte ball, defensive. Let's bring an attacking manager in. Now we brought an attacking manager. So everyone now is getting gassed about this attacking Ange ball. But then my problems are still the same. <laughs> where, where, with what? He's, the, he's got the same guys that are working. It's like, mm. well, you're doing all this stuff, but you're not then backing it up. So you're you're still doing the same stuff. And it's like rinse and repeat, rinse mm-hmm. and repeat. And people just don't, I don't know, man. People don't see it. I see it. A lot of people do, but many don't. And I don't see, it's like, it's like how you're expecting to get the same result when you keep banging his head against the wall all the time. I don't understand. You want different results when you're doing exactly the same thing. It doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work. And 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 guess what? If he doesn't get the back in, he doesn't get the players that he needs to play his football, guess what? Come December, he'll be sacked. He'll be sacked. It's as simple as that. It's so it's clear as day. I don't understand, guys. It frustrates me. You're going around. You're going around the circle, Iggy. This is what you're doing. You're going around the complete circle. And, and down twenty-three the... years of this, yeah. this, this, this. Twenty-three years of it. No. I've, I've, I've always said. I've always said to myself, looking at it from an outsider's point of view, and no bands. I've said it to Deji Spurs. I've said it to, to multiple Spurs fans that I know. You know, I, you need a whole culture change at that club it, from top to top. Bottom. Top to bottom. And, but where it starts, if I'm looking, because obviously I'm not a Spurs fan, I don't know anything about the board and all that kind of stuff. I'm not that into detail. But when I look at the squad, and I'm seeing, obviously, the whole thing of Harry Kane, in my eyes, he has to go this this window because you can't let him go for free. That would be the biggest mistake you're ever going to make, letting him go for free. You need I money. Mean, that's one thing I can leave. The, 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 we, we deal with accountants in our club. So one thing you can rest assured with, they want they will do their best not to let the come walk yeah. away with no money. That could that that I could almost you know put my house on the on the line on yeah. that. He they will they will cash in on him. Yeah, a hundred percent. But in my in my opinion, if I if I'm looking at it and you want to do a rebuild at Tottenham, because let's be real, it needs a bit of a rebuild. You've got you've got assets in that team, the way I look at it, you've got players that you can make a good team out of. You know, I I really like Benton Kerr, I love I like Basuma. I like Romero. He needs to control himself a bit, but he's a great defender. You know, I like Kulisevsky. Thank you. Thank you. Connor, Connor, thank you. I heard someone today say that they would rather have Maguire than Romero. No, they're idiots. Don't listen to them. They don't watch Maguire the game. They don't watch the game. Cast and, Romero. and I'm just like, oh, I'm like, okay. If Romero can, if Romero could just take a take a little bit of an edge off of his game and control, yeah, he'd be fantastic. Honestly, he would be fine. I, 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 with the guys, I will challenge anybody to be in Romero's situation. I, I, I take your point, what you guys are saying, but you look to your left. Imagine you're a defender now, right? You look to your left and you look to your right, and you're thinking, what? The... Come on, man. Give, give me, give me a chance. How how does your head not go? It will it will drive me insane every game having to do with this guy and this guy and and you no know, he's playing with Dyer, he's playing with Davis he's playing with it's it's it's, it's trash and you're like how yeah. does your head not go like especially if you're getting pumped you're conceding sixty three goals you're like sure he has to be accountable I, as well in that in that and you know what I thought about this and, and, like, about on, this? Yeah. and you know, thought about this if Romero knew he had Casemiro in front of him as a DM, making those tackles to cause a counter attack. Because that's what Romero does, those rash tackles. And I, and I get it. I'm being fair and balanced. He does make those rash tackles. People don't understand that he's trying to start a counter attack. If he knows Casemiro is in front of him, uh, bossing as a, as a, as a DM, it will be less likely that he's going to come out. He's going to stay in position. But at Spurs, have we had a proper defensive mid? We want to talk about not having a, a partner to your left, to your right. I mean, you have Emerson and you got, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Der uh, uh Eric Dyer. Then in front of you, right, Horberg was our DM, if you consider him a great DM, right, in front of you. So I, I mean, people are just are oh, going so. I, I almost I was driving when I heard it, and I was almost got into an accident. People, Maguire over Romero. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, man, people can't be unreasonable. 
it's right? chemistry. There, people guys. You people gotta, have you agendas plan. and they don't want to get off of it, right? Like it, it, it's one of those things where a lot of people are not willing to admit that they're wrong. And I've ever since I've come onto this uh, this lovely platform, I've had to admit I was wrong several times. I go back and watch some videos. I was like, wow, that was a dead take. But you know, people, you, you just got to admit that you're wrong and move on. And but in the people that are sticking to Harry Maguire, brutal take, brutal take. No. I feel sorry. I feel sorry for whoever lands him. I, I really, really um, do. To respond to Frankfurt Green, I just seen your 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 quest. Spurs fans really say no to England captain Maguire. Uh, Frankfurt, I'm saying no to Maguire because I can see the way Postacoglu wants to set up as a team. For, he wants to play on the front foot. He wants to go and press up high. It requires a defence to play high up the line. That requires two things. One, a defender that doesn't mind being one on one with a striker. There will be a situation where a defender has to do with a striker one on one. But also, they have to have certain characteristics, and one of those characteristics they have to be quick. If you're going to play up the line, you're going to get one ball over the top, which happened in two games against West Ham, and even the goal that uh, the city, the, the city's London's, what well, the city sailors, well, I can't remember the name now. One ball over the top is all it was uh, uh, to get caught in a counter. So you have to have defenders with certain characteristics. Maguire, can he play up the line, where the halfway line? Can he turn quick enough if the ball gets played over the top to spin and chase that defender to try and tackle it or block? He's not going to make that. He doesn't have those characteristics. So for me, Maguire is not suitable for the way Spurs need to play moving forwards. That's why I say no to Maguire. I don't think he's a bad player. It's certainly he's not as bad as people make him out to be. But he requires playing a certain way. And Tottenham's way they want to play isn't one of those. I hope that answers that that, that question on Maguire. Yeah. So, um, want to get to this topic, the topic of the night. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had a little fun on it. Um, I'll pop it up on the screen. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, we got the man. We got Mr. Joe Lewis. Um, yeah. Oh and since we don't want to spend on our defense, right, surely Joe Lewis is going to spend on his defense. And so I thought I would be funny and put great actors who played lawyers. Uh, the back line of Better Call Saul. Uh, Tom Cruise, who's yes. played numerous roles. Uh, uh, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Uh, a few good men. He was a lawyer. Uh, Jackie Childs, uh, who, uh, if you, a big Seinfeld fan. Um, he's there. Denzel has played role. My cousin Vinny, if you guys remember that movie, uh, Vinny Gabbabini, he's in the middle. He's the enforcer right there, the Italian enforcer. Um, Hector Spector from Suits. Uh, for those who uh, know that show, that's um, Harry's wife used to be there. What's her name? Uh, Meghan, Harry. Mar Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. Yeah, Meghan Markle's <laughs> also. Uh, Jack McCoy, Perry Mason, uh, Arnie L.A. Be Becker. Uh, if you're old enough, you remember L.A. Law. And so, yeah. So that is the team that um, Mr. Joe Lewis is going to need. Uh, I think El Woods is going to do great at left at left wing. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, I heard she can bang goals. <laughs> she is going to score. Uh, she is going to score. That's why I have her up there. And um, yeah, I thought I'll, I'll add in some humor uh, to uh, Joe Lewis versus the U.S. government. Um, this is uh, for those, and uh, like I said. I'm tired of saying it over and over again. And that's why I put Joe Lewis versus the U.S. government. Um, let me give you guys a background. Um, TJ would, would know the division the, the, uh, of court that's bringing this up. And mind you, this is not a guy who's a political figure. All right, we're out to get you, right? It's no. It's like they're doing their due diligence. They're looking to catch billionaires who are defrauding the government, you know, who are, you know... Defrauding the financial system in general. Basically. Yeah. And they got Lewis. 
And the reason why I say this is because if you be indicted by that court in that division, by the U.S. attorney, I'm not even talking about the low levels, the U.S. district attorney, that means they got, they got some good things on you. And it's a 98.5 conviction rate. And you're probably wondering, that 1.5, right? One of the cases were involved in one of the eyewitnesses disappearing, right? <laughs> Mafia. And I, I don't think Joe Lewis is up to that level, but usually they they got you. Either through eyewitnesses and, and they, they take years to be able to build up a case and say, bam, I got you. And so, yes, Joe Lewis is going to have the best lawyers he can buy and fight it. Um, some of his holdings, the boat, I, I already heard that the boat, he can't use the boat anymore. They're going to free some of his assets, his operations. Yeah, and it's sad because I take it personal because I know people who work directly and indirectly with Joe Lewis, with Tavistock. And so it is, you know, it is a major deal. It's, it's not slapping the wrist. And then there are people who are saying, well, at his old age, at age six, well, he's not served jail time. First of all, in the United States, we don't have ageism. All right? Bernie Murdoch went to jail at 71. I was watching a cold case. They arrested a guy for murder 40 years ago, and he was in his 80s. Then it, it all depends. He could, he could possibly go to jail. So it's not like, well, he's not going to go to jail. He, he could. And as ridiculous as it sounds, 200 years because it's 19 counts, yeah, they'll, they'll, they charge people. They send him to jail. nothing happening to him. Yeah. There's oh, going to so be here's, nothing. Okay, here's the, the deal. Here's but they're going to get a pile of, pile of paper. They're going to put it at the bottom of another pile of paper. And by the time they get round to it, He's going to be long gone. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Gonna be, he's going to be living in another world. Here's he won't the, be living here's, in this world. Here's the most that's going to happen to him. He's going to settle out of court. He's going to he has he's going to have to that. sell assets because he's going to have to sell most of his assets. I mean, when they when they get down to it, first of all, it's 25 million per count on the penalty. It doesn't so so he's going to have to settle that down and he's going to have to sell off a ton of assets, including Tottenham, his share in Tottenham Hotspur, I believe. Um, they, there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, well, he's not a part of the ownership. They're saying that because they don't want Tottenham to get sanctioned, which I don't think they will. Um, but they will have to sell his shares in Enoch. And I said this on the on the, on the the breaking news show on Tottenham Hotspur, uh, um, Tottenham Away the other night, is that they they are going to force him to sell, either, either because it is a financial necessity or because, much like what happened to Roman Abramovich, it's an embarrassment to British football. So it's either well, going to be... Tottenham it, are kind of dissociating themselves from it. Exactly, League even have right now, you're seeing, it, you're seeing everything. All, all the press that are coming out, because w when, when the indictments came out, right, you had all, every major news media was saying, Tottenham Hotspur owner, Joe Lewis. Uh, you know, the, it was literally... That is was his name, not not English billionaire Joe Lewis. It was English billionaire and Tottenham Hotspur owner Joe Lewis. So Tottenham Hotspur was like, "Whoa, he's not part of our ownership." Whatever. And it's just like, no, that's not that's not unequivocally, it's not true. But at the same yeah. time, here's here's where I think you you guys can look. Um, on the bright side, is that you guys are no longer going to have to deal with Joe Lewis. Because very soon he's going to be out. He's going to need to sell his shares. And he's going to be wearing an ankle bracelet the rest of his life. He's not going to jail. There's zero chance he's going to jail. The guy's, eight, what, he's 86. <laughs> he's not going to jail. Uh, 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 um, listen. Give me a break. I, 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 I think by the time they get around to it, uh, like I said, I think it'll be long gone. I don't think this is going to be settled anytime soon. This is yeah. going to get dragged on. So, there's so He has so many friends in high places that well, it, can kind of... It's another thing again, and I think will it's, like, it's going to be a stalling process, TJ. They, they might they might stall it, but you don't like you don't bring the 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 district attorney of the uh, of the Thirteenth Circuit Court of the United States of America. They don't put him in front of the podium 
and to to announce that billionaire Joe Lewis is under indictment for 19 counts of insider trading. They don't bring him out like that because this guy this guy is a Joe Biden appointed lawyer. Joe Biden does not mess around. And by the way, I keep seeing trying to get Joe Biden on uh, on my channel. He keeps, he keeps <laughs> me. Um, but anyway, getting well, serious though, so he's not Connor, going anywhere. I he's think Connor anywhere. needs to shoot off. Connor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot pick off, up Connor every time. Uh, right. Shout out, shout out your Instagram. Shout out your stuff. Shout yeah, out your stuff. Uh, we didn't even get to go much. through the kits with you, man. But uh, yeah. then another time. Another time. No, listen, I'll definitely get on another time. Uh, just running the stuff going on, so I'm a bit running a bit short at the moment. But uh, thank oh, you man. so much for having me on. I would love to come back on with you guys. You guys are a laugh, and I really appreciate you bringing me on. And of course, I'm normally with CJ on his channel. I'm pretty much I'm a regular now on there, aren't I? Now, yeah, today. yeah. So, and I do all the media <laughs> for TJ on there. So my main thing, I don't actually have a YouTube channel. I do run an Instagram. Um, it's called CMO.editing. And I do a load of graphics and stuff like that. So if you ever need graphics, anyone in the chat has any social medias, YouTube channels, I do tons of different graphics and editing. So feel free to hit me up on Instagram, cmo.editing. And um, I'm willing to help absolutely anyone. And I've done it with a load of Arsenal fans. So, uh, yeah, feel free to hit Head me up. Head over there, guys. Check it out. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Lily. And, yeah, I really appreciate no worries, again, you bringing me on, uh, Mari. And, and, yeah, big up. And I hope you have a great rest of your show, guys. And, Take uh, care, man. Yeah. Cheers. See you later, guys. Thanks very much, man. See you later, Connor. Right. Big up. No, everything you see on TJ Warren TV, because obviously if you've on, on this channel, you've heard me uh, go on about it. You've already subbed. You're already there. Everything graphically that you see on my channel, Connor did. He is an absolute legend. Um, so if you need anything um, graphic media for your YouTube channel or otherwise, hit him up. Definitely. Um, yeah. Anyway, Joe. Yeah. Joe is Joe is going to be wearing a, a bracelet. You know, you saw you saw at the end of Wolf of Wall Street, right? When uh, he was just wearing a bracelet at a country club jail. That's pretty much the worst that's going to happen to him after he has to sell all of his assets off. Yeah, it's serious stuff for him. He's done, but might be good for Tottenham fans. You never know. I don't think it's going to happen. Like you said, Iggy, it's not going to be anything that happens soon. But the, it's an eventuality that he will be out of the club. It, it is it is an eventuality. By hook or by crook. So. I'm sorry, man. I just I, did, I saw this earlier on. You put this up. Uh, I'm the re people like me are the reason why your favorite <laughs> manager Antonio Conte is gone. He would have been perfect to deliver try. Finally, end our losing streak at the Emirates. But you wanted him gone, Iggy. When have I ever wanted any of our managers gone? I didn't want Jose gone. I didn't want any of our managers gone. Not once did I say I wanted them gone. Was I enjoying his football? No, but I saw the bigger picture. I know. I'm, I'm calling it right now with Andre Postacoglu. If he doesn't get the guy, the players required for the way he wants to play, we're going to leak more goals than we did last year because he's a, he's more attacking prone than, than, than Conte's more defensive. And even with his defensive stance, we still conceded that many goals. What are they gonna do? What are they, what are they gonna do with Pasta Cockley's way of football? So I never wanted any of our managers, not once. Find me, I want Conte gone. When did I ever say that? So for you to say that people like me, which already that sounds so wrong, people like you. I don't understand why people write this stuff. People like you. What the hell does that even mean? That could be misinterpreted in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots so of idiots. Lots I'm, of idiots. I'm the re I am not that powerful. I don't have the power to send the uh, content on. Uh, ridiculous thing to say. The most out outrageous thing that he said in that entire thing, Iggy, was he would have ended our losing streak at the Emirates. Sorry, guys, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, we, we you're you're cutting a little bit, but I just have to call that out. Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous statement. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, but um. It's going to, it's not going to be settled quickly. Um, and um, and what Lee, uh, Lewis did in regards to setting up that trust last season was very, I would say, smart of him to do. Um, and probably he, he, not probably, he knew it was coming. And so um, it, it's funny how people can do a preemptive move and then later on it comes it comes up so so yeah it's really 
really embarrassing. It really is. I mean, this club has our football director who, who, who who's banned from doing transfers, um, you know, with his time at, at Juventus. We have, you know, uh, uh, a club that can't back their manager uh, in regards to getting what he needs, you know. Yeah. You've, seen, you've seen him in, in, in press conference. Um, you've seen him in press conference um, already starting to crack a little bit, you know, and so it's it's just some of the it's it's just some of the things that it's just man we are the gift that keeps on giving in regards to in regards to drama. I mean, yeah. we are the it, when this came out, I'm like, you got to be kidding me! <laughs> you got to be kidding me! We are the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, YouTube. Spurs YouTube content creators should be thanking <laughs> Andrew and Joe Lewis and the board. We should be thanking them because there is no dull moment with our club. In season, off season. You guys whatever. are never wanting for con for content. Look, the biggest never. thing that I had to deal with prior to that never Barcelona so game was, was was the was that horrible preseason game and people fighting in the sands. You guys got federal indictments. You guys got it's like Wolf of Wall Street. He's getting him. He's getting arrested in front of his uh, his uh, never a dull moment. I suppose, helicopter. Never. No, I was talking to Stella about that the other day. I was just like, I don't know how you guys keep up with it all. I honestly don't. And we, and we haven't even talked about this guy. And and the whole Jersey Gate uh, situation. I mean, it it. I'm telling you, we are the gift that keeps on giving in in, in that regard. And so the big elephant in the room, um, Harry Kane, right? We've seen him in two preseason games. I said the first game, he just came back from vacation, so he's not fit. Some people think he's just checked out. Maybe he is. Um, tomorrow. There's going to be a big meeting uh, with Byron, or uh, that's what is being reported. Um, I don't know if it's true, but it says there's going to be a big meeting tomorrow. Um, I hope it is true. I really hope it's true because we cannot lose this guy on the free. Um, those of, of you who know, and I've said this since end of January, early February, but my inside source um, through Manchester United. Right, my 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 mate in, in in Manchester, do his source. He said that Harry Kane would not sign a new contract. It will take a miracle. He told me this before Conte got fired, because that was during the time that people say, well, if Conte doesn't resign, then Harry Kane is going to do the smart thing and not also resign. And so, um, I've, I've been saying it. It would take a miracle, and that is bringing in a Mbappe, which I still can't believe we were linked to Mbappe. Like, it would take a miracle. Now we we have to get something for him. We have to. We cannot let this guy leave for the free. We, we need to get those funds in hopes that those funds are used to get bring in center backs and finally move on and finally move on. So... Um, Kane leaving, um, Iggy, I know we're tired about talking about this situation. I just wanted to just end. I just want to move on. What's your, what's your thought on Kane leaving? Guys, for weeks now, how many, you, you guys see my, hopefully, I hope you do, my, my good morning, uh, my good morning Tottenham away videos. How many times, how many videos have I said? We need to nip this in the bud. We need to deal with this AA sap. We need to decide one way or another what is it to be. If the guy wants the guy, which I believe is very unlikely to sign a new contract, it's not going to happen. He's not going to sleep with the devil again the second time around. It's okay. You're not going to sign. You're not going to. You're not. You're, you're not. You know. You're not leaving on the free. That's not even an option. TJ mentioned it earlier on. Not, they're not going to let him go on the free. This is not. It's not the way it works. So. So either sign a new contract or you go. Now, I, I I don't like the way Bayern Munich has necessarily gone about things, but essentially they're the only ones that really... See, right now, Spurs still have some sort of control as to who his next team is going to be. So if it's Bayern Munich, let it happen. Make a deal. 
take the money and just then reinvest it and spend it on players that you require in your team right now. Because we need players that are hungry. We need players that are on... With any team, you need players to be completely committed to the to the to to, to the cause. Mm-hmm. When you have a player that's kind of like angling a way out, it's it's no good for anybody. It's no good for anybody. So for me, take that money, get him to go to a team abroad, so you then don't have a situation where at the end of, at the end of next season or in January. He can sign for anybody. And that includes teams in England. That includes teams in London. That includes any team. So you don't want that situation to, to happen. So deal with it. Get the money. And we can start moving on. I, I think the longer this goes on, the media the media are doing what they've been doing for the last three years. They're one of them gone. They've been talking about Kane leaving every season right now. We are in a situation that we're in with a club with one of the, a, our biggest asset leaving next season for free because the club have allowed this to happen because we have not done anything to make him believe that Tottenham is the place to be. Nothing. We've done nothing since since he last signed this contract to now. We have done nothing to make him believe that we are ambitious enough. Our, our ambition match his. Essentially, that's what's happening. So. Yeah. We're not. We're not going to change that around. He's not going to stay. He's, whether he leaves this summer or next summer, he's still leaving. Um, and for me, I'm one of those guys that if I see an issue, I deal with it head on. And for me, this needs to be dealt head on. Make the deal, let him go, and the money you recoup, whatever money you recoup, you invest it and 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 and, and buy accordingly. If we have to play Richarlison and Son up front as the number nine for the season, so be it. We buy we buy another winger. If not, then reinvest it in a striker. That's how I see it. There's no there's no ifs. There's no buts. There's no it, it, you know it's 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 not for me. It's not even an option. But uh, um, him staying on another season and run the contract down. That for me is insane. It's, yeah. it, it would be absolutely insane. It's, it's the biggest player that we have. Is the biggest asset, and you can't let that walk away for free, for free. In my opinion. I agree with you. I I just can't understand, you know, even from just a a neutral point of view, and obviously I'm not going to be coming across as a neutral point of view, but um, as, as an, as a, as a, from a Spurs perspective, I don't see why you would, why you would want him to say it doesn't make my financial sense. And it doesn't make sense in terms of what you're going to have to compete. You're going to have to compete against him in two years. Then if you don't sell him now, you're competing against him. You don't sell him to Bayern Munich. You are guaranteed to be playing him either at Manchester United or Chelsea. Who's to say Arsenal? You, can, you can't rule anybody out. You can't rule yeah, Arsenal, you can't rule Arsenal rule out anybody. either. Because guess what? Because yeah, because if you don't think Arsenal are going to put in a cheeky bid for him, and another thing coming, <laughs> Old Campbell 2.0, it, it probably won't happen. I'm just saying. It, it, it's one of those things where you you have control of at least a little bit of control over the situation now. Sell them to Bayern. Get them out because the, all it's doing right now is poisoning the club. I mean, beyond the fact that your preseason has been absolute shambles, you have this specter hanging behind you. And we can talk about it until you're blue in the face, but at the end of the day, you know, these guys are going to training every single day. Kane is is in that captain role, according to Sonny every single day, still still leading the team, but they know he's gone. Mentally, he's gone. He can put on a smile for the cameras, be like, yeah, I'm doing my job. Yeah, you're a professional. You should be doing your job. That yeah. is his job. That is what he is getting to, paid to do. And big up to Harry Kane because he, he's honoring his contract. And and he's not – and he's he's sticking up for He doesn't have himself. to force the hand because it's in total to control, TJ. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have to do anything. All he has to do is either buy buy his time, play play his best football, and then wait until next season where he can go to go anywhere, including the Premier League. But right now, you could ship him off to the Bundesliga and reduce the chance of him coming back and being an op to you. Because yeah. if you don't think he's going to come back to the Premier League and or you know come back to the Premier League next season, if he isn't sold, you got another thing coming because he's going after that goal record. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. It totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mark, you all good? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh no, I'm just trying to pull up this banner here. Um no, it's it's just 
it, it, I'm just tired of it. You know, uh, Alex, Mr. Box Office, he says, I'm just tired. And I'm, I'm, I'm in that position, just tired of it. Let's, let's just sell Kane and let's just see what we could get and let's just be able to move on. And I'm not saying it in, because people will say, oh, you want to get rid of Kane. I love Kane. I learned my lesson when Gareth Bell left, right? Because when Berbatov left, right, I, I wasn't as much devastated. But I was devastated when Bell left. And then for me, I was just like, you know what? Players come and go. Mo, uh, Luka Modric, Kyle Walker, you know, um, Bell. Right? I had to watch Patrick it, Vieira and Terry Mari, leave my club. They, Mari, they go. the moment, like in any line of work. I'm not a King fan. I'm a Spurs fan. So yeah. Harry King got to go. It's in just, any line of work, if your player or if any any asset in your in your in your job, company, work, whatever, whatever it is, if they're not committed, I'm not saying he's not a professional. I think he will honor absolutely do his but he's 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 what is one foot out of the door. That's how you gotta look at it. And you can't have that. You can't start a new process, new manager. New players that have come in, players that have come back on loan. You can see even like the likes of La Celso and stuff. You know, players are trying to... You've got this thing going on where you're trying to start something fresh or as fresh as you possibly can. And your and your biggest asset... Your, and club captain is is kind of halfway through it. Halfway and, I'm, and I said this scenario, and I'll play it to you guys as well. I said this to the other guys as well. I said... Imagine you're going through a little bit of a tough time during the season where you've lost maybe three, four games on a bounce, and your captain is coming in the, in the locker room and is he's he's giving everyone don't you know the full barrels, and he's and then he comes to me. Let's say I'm in that locker room, and he comes to me and he and he dishes it out to me. My first response would be, would be "Who the fuck are you to tell me <laughs> how to be?" How, what when you're when you you are leaving this club? I will be here. You'll be gone. So I, I you know, you cannot take uh, the words of a captain who's halfway out of the door. Seriously, it's, it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So f you have to listen. The team, has, everybody has to be involved. The commitment. People have said that you know, we yeah, but Kane's still your captain. It doesn't matter if he's leaving or not. In that moment, he's speaking to you as a captain. Bollocks. It doesn't work like that. Do you need to be sure that whoever you, you, your captain of the ship has to be the most committed player in that club? I'm sorry. Otherwise, why is he captain for? Yeah. Uh, and I'll say this. Um, big up Daniela. Um, yeah, I would definitely like... For the preseason game, I would have liked to see uh, Divine get in or Scarlett get in um, against Lion City. Um, because we, we, we got to see these players play. I, I want to see what they got. And so, but it, it goes back to what I'm, I'm about to say. Put yourself in Kane's shoes, right? We, everybody here on this chat, on this panel knows how incompetent our team is, right? So you're Harry Kane, right? But for those who like, how can he leave? How can he not stay? Mind you, totally different from Totti, Totti who won with Roma. He won the league with Roma. Which is the ultimate, the Scudetto, that is the ultimate. Then was on the World Cup winning team, you know. And it's, so for him, there is no urgency to leave Roma, right? And I believe, and I truly believe, if we had won the Premier League, Harry Kane would say, All right, new project, I'll stay, you know, break the record, and I'll stay. But the oh, yeah, FA Cup would have sufficed. Yeah. And FA but Cup would have sufficed. But the thing is, if we see the incompetence over the last 15 years, or actually more than that, the whole Enoch era, but for him, the last 10 years, right, even coming from the academy, he's seen Paul Mitchell go. He's seen um, academy heads go. He's seen Parch not get back. For a couple of transfer windows, when it was oh, the yeah. time, I like Arsenal, 
right? Arsenal, this is Tottenham was in the same exact spot as Arsenal. The difference is Arsenal capitalized and, and, and back Arteta, where we did a uh, back Poch. So he saw that. Then he saw Jose, and he was close to Jose. Yeah. And then when and the way we did him dirty before a cup game and did it back him, right? Because if we think Eric Dyer's shit, what do you think? Harry Kane really thinks of Eric Dyer. Come on now. These players, they 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 know. They know quality, right? Then to see him go. So, of course, he was upset, right? And that summer, he wanted to go to uh, Man City. They had a gentleman's agreement, turned his back on him. So he broke, you know, brigandially stayed or, you know, have Conte, kind of Conte have, helped massively with that. Yeah, have tools. Then Conte comes in. It was like a rebirth. <gasps> Maybe, maybe we finally mean business. Nope. Became a the disaster show, a disaster class, a shit show. I'm gonna say it. Right? Project after project after project, disappointment, disappointment, and an incompetence, right? If we're making fun of Tottenham, he has friends who are outside Tottenham circle, and they're like, dude, like really? Are you gonna win with this with, with this group? So, of course, he's going to feel the way he feels. Like, yo, I'm going to leave, right? Robert puts in, you know, we got sucked by the stadium being built. It's going to be a game changer. Harry Kane thought that way, too. All right, we're building the stadium. It's going to be a, a, a game changer. Nope, another fail. Failure after failure after failure after failure. And people want to say, oh, we built the stadium. Oh, we did it. It means absolutely nothing. I would rather win trophies at Old White Hart Lane than now. Well, then you wouldn't catch up in the money in regards to Man City or whatsoever. Well, we were third on the list, and we can't sign center backs. <laughs> we're third on the list, and we can't sign center backs. Oh, we need the stadium to be uh, 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 so it could be a game changer, so we can be players. We're not players now. Villas are playing us. Brighton's are playing us. Also, to those who think that Richarlison scoring a hat trick against the City Sailors <laughs> is going to be the answer, guys. I mean, I'm seeing, I'm keeping an eye on the comments here, and I, guys, let's <laughs> wait to see the better opposition. Let's wait to see if he's able to do what he did yesterday against better opposition, such as Shakhtar yeah. Donetsk, Barcelona, and then they're getting in the league. If he's like able to do so, then I'll put my hands up and say, okay, fair enough. Highlight like, we are basing all of this on what he did yesterday. Well, we're done. We're so done. We're so done. Chris Arlson looks better in the new system than Kane. Sun will be in the striker role as well. It's time to move on and fix the defense. Chris <laughs> Charleston is not the answer. I, I'm going to hold fire on Rich I, I'm not ready to just go, yeah. Listen. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not ready for that. I, I'm gonna. Hold, I'm, I will still reserve judgment on on Richarlison, and I'll judge him against the better teams. It's good yeah. for his confidence, and if that helps him to kickstart his 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 career at Spurs, then 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 fair fair enough. But to say that he's the answer post Kane. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not, I'm yeah, I wonder. I wonder if there's a prop bet on on his uh, shirt takeoff to goal ratio. Like, is it going to be as bad as yeah, it was? Four yellow year? cards, one goal. Four That's it. Because <laughs> three of them got ruled out last season, but the yellow card stood. Go four to it. one. I don't know if it's four to one. I take a three to one odds though this this time. Three 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 yeah. three yellow cards, one goal. So I want to end the show on a lighter note. We didn't get to do this next the last week. Let's do this. Let's do it. And it's what do you got? It's the look of our kids. Um, let the video play. Um, our kids. Class. Meh. Okay. Ass. So, um, the look of our kids. Um, We'll go to our home one. Um, I like it. Um, not really much change, but you know, I mean, I, I that sponsor I like always it. kills it for me. Yeah, the red, the red. Um, 
the red drives us crazy, uh, TJ. Absolutely hate um, it. We can never have Arsenal red on our jerseys. But see, once again, that's Daniel Levy. This is an Enoch thing. We should never have red on our jersey. And so um, it's just, uh, it's, it's just. I don't understand why we can't have AIA in blue, in navy. It, it took it, the words still, out of my mouth. It's still very visible. It's still very visible on a, on, a, on a white background. I just don't understand. I, I get that the the, the 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 that the company is a you know red. I, I get that, but I think I think like you could it could work just as well with the navy navy writing, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's beyond my understanding, and that for me, that's what makes me not buy any Spurs jersey, certainly home ones. So the yeah, the way it, uh if they could get rid of the purple, I wouldn't have no problem. But the light purple, I just uh JP was wearing it the other night. It doesn't actually look as bad as when I when what I what I when I what I first thought. But they see the sponsor I prefer much much better. But yeah the colours and stuff like that I'm I'm not not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, guys. Yeah. And but pick up cubed. See cube in the house. The psycho neo psychedelic. <laughs> I'll get in I'll get into that. I'll get into that in a second. Yeah. Well we're gonna get to that. Now. Now we're talking. I love this kid. Anything black and gray. I love this kid. I like this kid right here. I'm looks like a, looks like a, looks like something like the Raiders would wear. You know what I mean? Yeah, get kind yeah. of like a bad. It looks, it looks mean. Yeah, I like this kid. I I like it. I like it. Iggy, you like it? Uh, Iggy doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm not here or there, Mo. I, I'm not excited. Is it better than the other away kit? Maybe, maybe. I like the sim the simplicity of it. The sponsor again. Uh, am I mad? And there's none. None of the three kits make me go, "Wow, I, I really like it." But again, opinions do change when you see it on the players on the pitch. Often that happens when you, sometimes it's the photo itself that doesn't do it justice. So I I reserve a little bit of judgment until I see it on the players on the football field. I think then uh, perhaps we, we 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 might look at it with different eyes, but. It's, uh, as it is right now, I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent to all three kids, in, in, all, in all honesty. All right. So that's uh, it's a super chat. You got a super chat, Maui. Yeah, I was going to get to that after we uh, roast Arsenal. No. Um, this kit, I mean, it's a solid <laughs> Arsenal kit. You know, I mean, classic. It's, it's a classic look. It's, it's classic Arsenal. Yeah. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I don't see anything wrong with it. And you guys can banner us a bit saying, "Oh yeah, you were you were playing." No, no. All it's, all. To me, it's a classic. Oh, it got a little bit of jazzy lines going through uh, yeah. the shirts. I, I, I hadn't noticed that before. As um, but it's just a classic Arsenal look, you know. It's no, no. For me, it doesn't. I don't have the little kids, Dietrich. Those are the kids that are coming out. Those are the right kids. Gold those Adidas, are, I think the stri are those stripes gold and then the shoulders? Yep. I was yeah. wearing it on the stream last night. They are gold. Yeah. And then down this down the the worst part about this kit though is and obviously Arsenal screwed this up is um on the authentic kit they have um the 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 records in the you know, win loss or not win loss, win draw, win draw, win draw from the invincible season, right? But they only got 32 out of the 38 games. Gotcha. So they they did a recall on all the authentic home kits, but I have one of the defective ones. But yeah, all right. keep that. DJ, awesome. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get to this. Here we go. Go for it. What the hell is this? Okay. okay. What, what? That is. That is. That is fugly. All right. And you know what you're <laughs> that is. I, I'm sorry. I know we're rivals, but like, damn. I'm thinking the uh, the the Predator movie, like. Coming out the jungle, like what, like what the hell? What is this? Yeah. So it's obviously doesn't 
go up. It doesn't measure up to the Arsenal away kits of, of the last few seasons. Um, there is a little bit of thought to it so that it, those lines actually do mean something. It is the depo- it's the topography of Islington. So those lines actually do mean something. Um, the colors are where I'm kind of raising an eyebrow. Like, why don't instead of the electric blue, you do a red? That's where I'm kind of like, eh, I, I'm not a big fan of the electric blue, but um, yeah, this is, it's hilarious. AFTV actually showed me this kit for the first time when I was at, out, out in front of the White House. I did an interview on it. They asked me to rate it at, um, out of 10, and I said it was a five um, just because it, there is some thought behind it, but the color scheme is is brutal. I'm not a big fan of the the forced jersey look, you know, the the dots. What? Yeah. Like they, they have to add like some sort of texture there. But the more I watched it, you know, I, I think it I think it um I, I it, think it it's gonna sell. I think it's gonna it's sell gonna with sell. the younger, younger crowd. I think it's the younger crowd will go for it, but us me bit that's a little bit older. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, I, I, it's I gonna sell. a classic look. It's I gonna sell. It's gonna sell. And 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 look, compared to last year's away kit, it's it's a huge downgrade because last year's was class ten out of ten. The black and gold is unbelievable, but this is just so different, and everybody's clutching their pearls because it's so different. So, <laughs> yeah. and then I guess your third kit, which is uh, it makes up for having the ugly away kit. Uh, <laughs> This class not- class yeah, love it okay. i love it i'd rate that i'd rate the the blue the blue and the green are are clash a little bit for me it's a little bit too too similar but i'm gonna go i'm getting an eight out of ten on that one i think it's classy look the collar's awesome um i'm really looking forward to seeing that um that third kit in the champions league i really am it's gonna be great champions league nights under the lights Five TJ's rating skills are one out of ten. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> Coming from you, that is a compliment, my brother. <laughs> um, let me, uh, before I end the show, um, get to the second uh, thank you, uh, Tim Men, for the original um, super chat. But a user, thank you. He says, window has been uh, – actually, let me remove this. Uh it's I'm blocking it. Okay. Window has been uh cat. Kaka. 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 Uh just like the previous windows. Levy brought in Madison to try and entice Kane to stay. I agree. And he tried to show show the uh the fan base. Oh look, I'm showing ambition. Yeah, signed in Madison, who happened to have one year contract and Leicester City was regulated. Yeah, tough, right? Um, Levy is cheap and will not invest in the team. I 100% agree. I I don't think anybody can disagree with A users. Uh, Super chat, thank you. Um, Yeah, I I mean, I I agree. Um, And so, yeah. Um, We're about to end, but once again, um, TJ, where can people find you? TJ Warren TV, everybody. Um, this is going to be a weekly show with me and Mari um, and any any other gooners that we decide to come in here and and, and fight the good fight against our our, no- our noisy neighbors down the road. Um, yeah, so TJ Warren TV. Um, I'm all over the place. I'm doing doing uh, shows all over the place, but my flagship show is the American Idiot Show Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. Um, I believe tomorrow we're having Will we're having Will Stewart and Brian Daigle on tomorrow night, so nice. that'll be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, another, another Arsenal versus Spurs showdown, but I think it's going to be be good conversation. Lots of news, lots to talk about. Obviously, we couldn't get everything that we wanted to talk about in in two hours. So, um, if you haven't subscribed already, go over to TJ Warren TV, smash the like. I think we're eleven off of four hundred subs. So, so we're we'll put the link in the chat, guys. So yeah, we'll just kindly put the link in the chat. Um, well, uh, into August, you're gonna get it to one K. Trust me, it's gonna get the we. We will make that happen. Appreciate uh, it, Appreciate yeah. that. And obviously, yeah, pick up the Tottenham away guys every single time. Awesome guys. Very welcoming. I, I came in talking crap um, one night 
um, and then and then ended up being friends with them um, by the end of it. So um, support these guys. Thank you, thank you very much for having me and uh, doing the show with you, Mari. is a pleasure. So let's let's keep it going. It's gonna be big. Thank you, C Cube. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we we'll we'll have you on here to ban uh, to ban to Arsenal. Uh, I, once the season starts, it's it's going to be wild. Cube, uh, the guests that we're working on loan to Rexham, I heard. So, Cube, are you still on loan to Rexham? Let me know. <laughs> uh, big up, big up. Um, yeah. So, uh, Iggy, people know where you can find us on this channel. Um, yeah. What are we doing, guys? I'll be, I'll be uh, at some point tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a good morning shot of away video as I do daily. It's going to uh, be so uh, yeah, so. of nothing. Uh, if we sign someone, we'll have something. Uh, it, just more ranting, just more <laughs> meltdown. What can I do? What can I do? I, 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 purple and gold is all I can say, guys. Purple and gold till this club is sold, man. Um, but yeah, um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, um, I'm going to be staying up tonight really late, uh, early hours of the morning because I want to watch the the Milan Juventus game. Uh, so I'll be up at three in the morning watching that. But I'm just enjoying pre season football, trying to watch as many games as possible. And uh, yeah, tomorrow morning we'll do a video and then this will we'll see what the weekend brings, guys. 100%. Um, yeah, um. <laughs> Go Rex and put man and mess united my mullets in the hospitals. <laughs> uh but uh, another super chat. Thank you once again, A user. Big, big up, big up, up guys. Where are our center backs? Langley is the answer. Uh apparently he's gonna be the answer. So we'll probably <laughs> Iggy will do a a show uh morning uh good morning Tottenham uh with the breaking news. Langley is our center back. Um, that we are bringing in, and it's not even a joke anymore. This, it's, it's seriously that that's going to be our only thing. Um, last thing I'm gonna say is once again, please, please subscribe and like to our channels, uh, which are soccer sessions. Please head over there, which is the old Tottenham way too. Like and subscribe because there's going to be a transition period that this show is going to be on that channel. And also, subscribe, like, to the mothership, uh, Tottenham Away. Um, please smash that like, subscribe, and um, we have some more more stuff, more content, and some exciting things that are going to be coming up uh, once the season hits. And so, yeah, that is it. Um, we are going to sign off. Um, and uh, uh, it's tough to say, come on, you Spurs. So I'm going to say this. Levy out, Enoch out, Tavistock out, and Joe Lewis out. Come on, you Gunners. Let's go. Levy out. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>